Today on Airborne, Michael Vai steps down from his position at Glass Air. Louis Andrews resigns from the EAA Board of Directors, and the FAA suspends opposite direction operations at commercial airports. I am Ashley Hale. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. After announcing the sale of the company to a Chinese investor at Oshkosh, Michael Vai is resigning as president of Glass Air after an 11-year run. Vai joined Glass Air in 2001, just after it was brought out of bankruptcy. Under his leadership, Glass Air Aviation built a new team of employees, acquired the Glass Star line of aircraft, brought composite production in-house, consolidated operations, designed and developed the highly successful Sportsman aircraft, introduced the revolutionary Two Weeks to Taxi program, and strengthened Glass Air's position as a leader in the aviation industry. Vi is one of the true class acts in the aviation world and is expected to have a bright future in aviation. Change is also in the wind at EAA. After 26 years of continuous service on the organization's board of directors, Louis Andrew announced his retirement on August 3, 2012. For the past year, Andrew served as chairman of the board. In making the announcement, Andrew said, quote, I have planned to retire this year, and after a great air venture Oshkosh, and with EAA having a terrific president and CEO, Rod Hightower, in place, the timing is right. It's now time for me to allow the many other talented directors we have on the board to take their turns. During his last 10 years on the board, Andrew was the chair of the executive committee of EAA, vice president of EAA, and over the past year, he was chairman of the board of directors of EAA. He also served as treasurer of the International Aerobatic Club, a division of EAA, and had been a member of the IAC board. Andrews was strongly supportive of Rod Hightower in announcing his exit, saying, quote, Rod brings the experience, the skill set, and the passion for aviation that assures a bright future for EAA. Following a flight of just over eight months, Curiosity landed on Mars in the very early morning hours, Eastern Time, Monday, near the foot of a mountain three miles tall and 96 miles in diameter inside Gale Crater. During a nearly two-year prime mission, the rover will investigate whether the region ever offered conditions favorable for microbial life. The seven minutes of terror has turned into the seven minutes of triumph, said NASA Associate Administrator for Science, John Grunsfeld. Shortly after landing, Curiosity returned its first view of Mars, a wide-angle scene of rocky ground near the front of the rover. It was also captured by a high-resolution camera aboard NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, still connected to its 50-foot-wide parachute as it descended towards its landing site at Gale Crater. NASA reports that all of Curiosity's instruments are working normally and that the scientific mission is ready to begin. We're back with more in a moment, including this week's barnstorming commentary. You're watching Airborne on Aero TV. Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. We're using technology to make this kind of training accessible to all flight schools of all sizes and all budgets and to democratize flying in general because we make this kind of training more accessible to people. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, 
Send us an email to news by at aero-news.net. The near collision, which happened when airplanes departing from and landing at Washington Reagan National Airport in Washington, D.C. last week, were inadvertently placed on a collision course, has prompted the FAA to temporarily suspend opposite direction operations at commercial airports, pending the development of new procedures. The announcement came in a memo to Acting Administrator Michael Huerta, sent Tuesday by Chief Operating Officer David Grizzle. Grizzle said there is no standard protocol in place specifically for opposite direction operations, which it is believed contributed to the miscommunication between TRACON and the tower at the airport. Grizzle said opposite direction operations will only be used in emergency situations while the new procedures are being developed. The FAA will work with the Controllers Union, NATCA, to determine what kind of training will be required for controllers. The NTSB is continuing to investigate the contained engine failure that occurred July 28th on a Boeing 787 Dreamliner during a pre-delivery taxi test in Charleston, South Carolina. The board has determined that a fan mid shaft on the failed GENX engine fractured at the forward end of the shaft, rear of the threads where the retaining nut is installed. The fan mid shaft is undergoing several detailed examinations, including dimensional and metallurgical inspections. Investigators say they will continue the detailed examination of the engine and metallurgical analysis of its components. The investigators have also begun reviewing the engine manufacturing and assembly records. The board emphasizes that all of the data being released is factual and not a determination of the cause of the failure. The Airline Professionals Association, Teamsters Local 1224, filed a lawsuit last Monday against ABX Air over a captain's termination for exercising his FAA-mandated authority to ensure safe flight operations and his refusal to operate the aircraft in a manner that was prohibited by FAA-approved aircraft procedures. In a news release Wednesday, the union said it was standing in, quote, strong support of the pilot. The firing stemmed from an incident in June in which the pilot, who was operating an ABX flight in Japan, requested a change to the flight plan after raising safety concerns. Following the incident, the airline took disciplinary action and fired the pilot for refusing to sign a coerced statement that said the pilot was not justified in questioning the flight safety. The lawsuit filed against ABX and the U.S. District Court for the Southern District in Ohio argues that discharging the captain creates a, quote, chilling effect for other pilots and their power to make decisions in the interest of flight safety. In his barnstorming commentary this week, ANN's editor-in-chief Jim Campbell says that this time curiosity didn't kill the cat but in fact might have killed the doubt many had about NASA. Thanks, Ashley. Hi, folks. It's been a good week for aerospace and, to a certain extent, the rest of the aviation community. After years of watching NASA get pummeled, watching our dreams and our aspirations get kicked aside by various political concerns and more machinations in Washington than you can shake a stick at, it was wonderful to see that no matter what, the budget cuts, the restrictions, the doubters, the naysayers, and bad press, and you name it, the NASA, when it needs to, can still knock one out of the park. Curiosity killed the doubt. It killed the doubt about a nation that has always shown its superiority in aviation and aerospace. It killed the doubt about American ingenuity. It killed the doubt about the capabilities of our people to rally together for an amazing cause that benefits all of humanity. And more important than anything else, NASA just showed that they were cool. So darn cool. Right now, we've got this amazing vehicle running around, well, about to run around on the surface of Mars. It's going to pay off benefits over the years that we can't even begin to imagine. We'll know more about our universe. We'll start knowing more about ourselves. And the one thing that's more important than anything else is that we will, again, prove that we are an exploring nation. 
that we thirst for knowledge, that we thirst for excellence. And maybe somewhere down the line, curiosity will inspire. It will do more than kill doubt. It will inspire people to look up, to look out, to explore, to uh, push their own horizons and make something better of their lives and the lives around them or all the people they care about. It's not hyperbole, folks. I have watched things like this time and time again inspire people. And curiosity is an extraordinary opportunity for the aerospace and the aviation community to show everybody else that, one, yeah, we got it. Two, you can be a part of it. And three, we're making your world a better place. Kudos, NASA. You still got it. Boy, do you still have it. For the Aero News Network, Aero TV and Airborne, I'm Jim Campbell. Neil Armstrong, who in 1969 became the first human to walk on the surface of the moon, recently underwent a quadruple coronary bypass after four blocked arteries were discovered during a routine checkup. Armstrong's wife, Carol, says that the retired 82-year-old astronaut is, quote, doing great, according to a report from NBC News. That assessment was backed up by fellow moonwalker Gene Cernan, who flew on the Apollo 17 mission. Armstrong's condition was discovered when his doctors performed a heart stress test, which he failed. His wife said that he is in very good spirits and doctors anticipate no problems as he recovers. ANN joins the entire aerospace community and wishing Mr. Armstrong a speedy recovery. Remember, Airborne is now seen twice weekly, Tuesdays and Fridays, here on Aero TV. Quick, concise, and convenient, you're always up to date when you're Airborne with Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.